to have a relationship because you might hurt me, but you know you got to break through that and you got to know how to have relationships with people, good Christian relationships with people because we can strengthen each other. That's the, one of the reasons why we meet together, to encourage one another in the Lord. And I want to encourage everyone that's here this morning, I am proud of you. I just thank God for uh, when I came over uh, Saturday, and I think it was Friday that uh, Willie Preston, he just cut the grass all out there. Saturday they were here, and the two willies were together, and they cut all that grass out there on the ditch bank. And, and for a long time I've been looking for somebody to do that. And, uh, and they just did it. Let's give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Amen. Then yesterday, after they left, I looked over there, and this guy from the Philippines flew in. And he was out there cutting the hedges. And I declare I took my nap. And I woke up, and I had about five people that came from Columbia yesterday, and Susan and me ministered to them, put them all in the hot seat. And we walked out, we saw them leave, we waved them goodbye, and had a great time in the Lord. We turned around, I looked around, my hedges were clipped. I said, Lord, you sent the angels here to c cut the hedges. And, and I just noticed it. And I found out it was my brother here. They came by, even clipped mine. I said, I'm blessed. You're blessed. We're all blessed. So remember that, son. Remember that. We're blessed. You can't get no more blessed than you are right now. You got food, shelter, clothes, air conditioning, whatever. We're blessed. We are blessed. Anybody have anything they want to share before we get into the word of God? A little girl raising her hand like that. And I looked at her and she said, <laughs> Oh, I'm glad y'all put up with me. But I'm just happy. Hallelujah, I'm a happy man in God. I've read this word and I see who we are in Christ. And I can't do nothing but shout the victory. But uh, David, would you put the cross right in the front? All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you that we can spend time in the word of God and understand and comprehend the word of God. We thank you for what you have done for us. And we are so blessed. And I thank you for it, Lord. May the spirit of wisdom and revelation rest upon your people now that we might supernaturally understand and comprehend that our hearts would be flooded with the light of God. That we might see how blessed we are. We thank you, Lord. You chose us before the foundation of the world to be your children. And we honor you now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I want to talk about the resurrected side of the cross. The Bible says we got to rightly divide the word of truth. <laughs> Don't call a saint a sinner. And don't call a sinner a saint. That's rightly dividing the word of God. If you've been born again by the spirit of God, and you'll know it because you'll love him. You'll love him. If you don't love him, you ain't been born again. I don't mind telling you that. Because when you fall in love with Jesus, that's just the way it is. You just love him. I'm not saying you do everything right, but you love him. How many will say amen to that? You know, you just love him. But on this side of the cross, man is lost. And we do sometimes magnify this a whole lot. But we don't understand that when we were saved, we passed through death, through Christ, to a new life and became a new creature in Christ. That's what I want to preach about. Old things have passed away. The old condition is gone. In fact, the old condition has been buried with Christ. And we've been risen to walk in the newness of life by the Spirit of God. And the first word we want to see on the uh, board is Romans chapter 5, verse 15. Let's meditate on this verse now. 
And let's really get the blessing here now. But God, everybody say, but, but God, free gift. All right. The free gift of righteousness, the free gift of eternal life. The free gift is not at all to be compared to the trespass. Comparison. There's the trespass. Adam trespassed and thus made us all sinners. But Paul is saying, but the free gift over here, which is eternal life and forgiveness of sins and the gift of righteousness, you can't compare this with that. Because you see, his grace and his mercy is far beyond. It's like a great mountain compared to the transgression. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, get your minds open here now. I just said something you ought to be shouting about right now. If you understand what I'm saying, let's go through that again. There is no comparison of the, of the grace and the free gift and, and the love and, and, and God. Uh, I mean, God's grace, his free gift, of right, it, it's, it's so big. Can you see a mountain? See, see a mountain? And I want you to see a little valley over here. Come on, church, don't shout me down. You got to see this. You can't compare it. Because God's grace is so much larger than the transgression of Adam. What is he saying? I can't say it no more clear. And what do we measure on? Us preachers. <laughs> no, there's a time to teach about the transgression. I'm going to show you the scripture what Paul, Paul sees it and how God wants us to see it. Are you ready? Let's finish this. But God's free gift is not at all to be compared to the trespass. His grace is out of proportion. There's the mountain. To the fall of man. Everybody look at me. Say amen. amen. How many sees it? See, you got to see what the Lord has done. Now, I want to go over that again. The, the trespass of one man. It was bad. But the grace and the mercy and the free gift of God, you can't compare it. Why? Because the grace and the free gift of God of righteousness and justification and, and, and deliverance is so much greater in proportion to that, that sin. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. If you see it, you'll get free. Some of you seen it and you're clapping. Because I tell you what, if you can see it in the spirit, the condemnation and the guilt that you feel so many times on your spirit will disappear. No more will you run around with your head down when I'm just an old sinner. No. The proportion of the free gift. Look at that great mountain. What is one of the biggest mountains? Somebody help me. Everest. Mount Everett. Mount Everett. Mount Everett. Can you see Mount Everett? That's just a little bit of God's grace. Compared to the transgression of the one man Adam. Now let's be honest. How many times it seems like we magnify what Adam has done. Instead of what the Lord has done on this side. Come on church. Don't shout me down. Don't shout me down. Please don't shout me down. I'm trying to get you delivered and set free. Because you're going to be like that man. Sitting at the, at the, at the city gate. He went. What? Jumping and hopping and praising God. He saw the greatness of God's love and grace. And I saw all he could do was jump and praise God. Whew. Jumping and hopping and praising God. Wow. 
So here's a big mountain of grace, a big mountain of, of, of God's love, a big mountain that's like Mount Everett, a little sin that Adam did to all of God's grace and mercy that he has poured upon his children. Be honest with me, and I know because I've wrestled with it myself. In your brain, you're just one old good-for-nothing sinner. Come on, don't shout me down. All I can do is make mistakes. Well, I want, I want you to compare your little mistakes, burnt steaks, <laughs> your little mistakes, to the mountain of God's grace and love. It's all, it's a, this is, listen, this Mount Everett, this grace, this mercy, free gift, it, you can't compare it with that little teeny transgression that Adam did. Uh, this covers so much more sins and so much more grace and so much of everything. It's so big, it covers everything. You can't compare it with this little transgression that our little Adam, bless his heart, did but that is so locked in our psychic that we can't somehow enjoy the goodness of God for it has truly brought me to repentance watch this let's finish reading that but God's free gift is not at all to be compared to the trespass that, is, that Adam did. His grace is out of all proportion to the fall of man. Somebody help me with that proportion. Somebody educated in here. Mike, come up here. What, what, what do you see when you see the, the proportion? What is that? The, 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 how can we help us there? What you got? Well, proportion would be uh, the size of the earth compared to the size of the sun. You may be seated. <laughs> Do you hear what he said? That's good. The size of the earth, how about this? To the size, compared to the size of one person, one man. See the earth and, and the one man? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God. He has done such great and marvelous things. Sometimes when I see my sin, I weep and cry, and that's good. I've done it, so have you. But I want you to be whole. The glory of the Lord and compare it with your little transgression. Well, aren't you you're sort of stretching it? No, I'm, I, I, I don't feel like I'm doing justified to it. I, I mean, it's awesome. Is anybody having a hard time grasping what I just said? Anybody back on that back row, are you, are you grasping this? Yeah. Amen. I want you to see the comparison. The comparison. Yes. Yes. Woo! The earth to one acre of land. Let's finish this. For if many... For if many died through one man's falling away, his lapse, his offense, and many have, we all have, much more profusely did God's grace and the free gift that comes through the undeserved favor of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound and overflow to and for the benefit of many. Grace for everybody to be born in this world. Let's go on a little bit further in the Word of God. Let's look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. 
nor is the free gift at all to be compared to the effect of that one man's sin. For the sentence following the trespass of one man brought condemnation. Whereas, whereas the free gift following many transgressions brings justification, an act of righteousness. Mm. If I keep preaching, there won't be many people left. <laughs> Must be good preaching. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> Lord, open her eyes that we might see what you've done. <laughs> because there's liberation in this like you've never known before. You know, let me, you know, how many love me? Amen. Okay, we just, I'm just opening up and some things you might agree with, you might not, but in my own life, I've been caught up with my transgressions. Uh, not, not so much anymore, because my eyes have been open. I see the mountain. And then I see the little transgression because there's no comparison and as long as you focus on what you don't have and what you th not good enough and you know you can never do nothing right the devil will have his foot right on your neck but when you can see by revelation of the power of God the, 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 the tremendous mount of grace and mercy that's been extended to all of us. You will definitely go hopping and leaping and jumping and praising God. And it'll happen. And you might not be able to explain it. But that's just the way it works. No more gloom and doom. But it's all glory, glory, glory. Notice free gift. Nothing we can do to earn it. Nothing. Just as you are. As you see. Because you can't compare it. Because the grace and the love and the goodness of God. The power of the blood is so much greater than our transgressions. Amen. I don't know if you've never heard preaching like this. But you know, you weigh it out. Get in the scriptures. See if these things be so. Mm. All right. Now, means that we said that, look at verse 17. Verse 17. Mm, mm, mm. Romans 5:17. For if because of one man's trespasses, lapse and offense, death reigns through that one man. Everybody say much more. Much more. Much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace that great mountain overflowing grace unmerited favor and the free gift of righteousness putting them into right standing with himself reign as kings in life through the one man Jesus Christ the Messiah the anointed one say so you can quote scriptures you can memorize scriptures, but if you don't, and if I don't get the revelation of what I have already preached and what the Lord has showed us, it'll be like nothing. I've heard that before, and we all have. 
But when the light is turned on, and I ain't fussing, I ain't complaining, you'll go hopping, leaping, and praising God, and then you say, Lord, I spent all that time worried about this little transgression of Adam, which came over into my life, and I'm missing out on the free gifts of righteousness and, e and forgiveness and eternal life. It's so much more greater. Oh, but Lord, I'm getting caught up with that now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. You can't compare it. No way, Jose! Now check your experiences in life. Check mine. The least little thing, we get down and out, don't it? Isn't that true? All of us do it. But see, we're seeing, wait a minute. <laughs> Greater is he that is in me. This mountain is great. How many of you know that what's, what's going to destroy the kingdoms of the Gentile is that, that, that stone that's been hewn out of the mountains of God's grace and mercy is going to crush all the other kingdoms. And that's when the kingdom of our Lord will reign on this earth and we will reign with him. And he's teaching us now how to reign and rule in this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, I want to set you free. It's so easy to get discouraged in it. Sure it is, all of us. But here's how you fight it. You see the mountain. How many of you know it's bigger than the transgression? You see the servant uh, of, of, of the prophet, you know, he was all shook up about all his the transgression soldiers out there in the natural and he run in there say master 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 we're surrounded <laughs> and the prophet would oh god we're surrounded <clears throat> he said lord <clears throat> open his eyes that he might see the mountain of grace and mercy and goodness Come on, if you got, you, you know, you a little something about prophecy now. Because what do we look at? That one transgression. <laughs> Guilt comes in. Maybe we go to church, maybe somebody will give us a little lift. All have sinned and come short to the glory of God. I knew that. But what about the mountain of grace and mercy and the goodness of God and the power of the blood that cleanses me from all sin? I've been declared righteous in the eyes of God. You've been declared righteous in the eyes of God. You have been justified in the eyes of God Almighty by what His Son did at Calvary. So quit. Looking over on that side. Now, if all of you all were a bunch of sinners, I'd lay it on you. I'd put fire down on you to get you through the cross and get you over here and let you see the mountain. But I'm talking to saints. And some of us has lost our vision of the mountain. Oh, man, let's move on here. I ain't got much time. Supper's almost done already. What time? I, I can preach to three o'clock, right? Okay. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Now, <clears throat> look at verse 18. Verse 18. Here we go. Verse 18. Well then, as one man's trespass, one man's false step, and falling away led to condemnation, for all men, for all men, boy, I'm glad he didn't stop there. <laughs> so, one man's act, that's Jesus Christ, of righteousness leads to acquittal and right standing with God and life for all men. Amen. Yes, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I even know the verse. What was it again? I forgot. Yeah, you're right. Ah, think about it. Whoo. Now look, look at this thing. This thing gets excited as we really begin to, as the revelation begins to come in now. I want you to catch this. 
All right, let's go to the next verse. For just as by one man's disobedience, and that's Adam, falling, failing to hear heedlessness and carelessness, that many were constituted sinners by that one man. And we all said, yep, all have sinned. But we have no, no problem accepting that. Well, notice, notice the rest of that. So by one man's obedience, and who is that one man? Jesus Christ. The many, that's us, will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with God by that one man's obedience. And that one man is Jesus Christ. But our, most of the people that I talk to, and I do this just to see what, how they respond, isn't it wonderful to know that you're righteous? Isn't it wonderful to know that you're righteous? Isn't it wonderful to know that you're righteous? Some people have a hard time believing that. Because see, they're looking at what the one man, Adam did, and there's a time and place for that for some folk. But folks, if you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've been declared righteous, fully justified. No ands and bits about it. No trying to be better or get better. You won't get better, you'll probably end up getting bitter. You've got to accept by faith what that one man did, Jesus Christ, to make us right with God. I'm right, you're right with God by what Christ did, and we believe it, we accept it by faith, and therefore we become partakers of it. And somebody comes up to you and says, you know, you're just an old sinner. That's all you are. We had a, but you know that ain't true, because you've gone through the cross. What happened to your old man? Oh, buried with Christ. Have you ever buried anything? You don't see it no more. I don't know, maybe some folks don't have enough dirt over themselves. <laughs> buried with Christ. You out of sight. You don't exist no more. The old man don't exist no more. It's gone. It's buried. It's no, it, it's, it's, that's, it ain't, no, that ain't you. You are a brand new creation in God. A brand new species on this earth. That's you and me. Those that have trust Christ as their personal Savior. Now, let's move on. This is getting good. I'm trying to get you edified and delivered. That's verse 19. I want you to turn to, put on the board, Romans 5, 1. 5, 1. Now I'm going to say something. If you've given your life to Christ, I ain't talking about your behavior. I'm not talking about what you do or don't do. That's another subject. The Bible addresses that. But I'm talking about us becoming righteous in God. Look at there. Therefore, since we, all right, everybody say, therefore, therefore. since I, I am justified, justified. acquitted, acquitted. Declared. declared, righteous, righteous. And, given and given a right, a right. Standing, with God standing with God through faith. Through faith. All right, hold there. Let us grasp the fact. See, there's facts in the Word of God. It's a fact that we died with Christ. It's a fact you've been raised to walk in the newness of life. That's it. That's a fact. Let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy. Are you enjoying your walk with God? Are you enjoying your peace with God? Are you enjoying the fact that you have been acquitted? Are you enjoying the fact that you've been justified? Are you enjoying the fact that you've been made righteous? 
Are you enjoying the fact that you have become a new creation in Christ? Uh, are you enjoying the fact that when you pass from this life, you ain't going down, but you're going up. Amen. Now look what it says. To hold and to enjoy peace with God. Amen. You know yourself. If you don't have peace inside of you, you are one miserable person. And the devil's doing his work real good to keep us all confused and worked up. God is called the God of peace. And when God is in full control in your life, you're enjoying that peace. And I tell you, that's health. That's health. All this anxiety that we pick up and, you know, one thing or another brings sickness upon so many of God's people. Aren't you glad you don't worry about anything? Say that again, Bob. I believe we will. That sounds pretty good. Aren't you glad? You, don't, you know why you don't worry about nothing? Because the God of peace, you've prayed, and the God of peace keeps your heart and mind at rest as you trust in him. Now, you, let's stop and think for a moment. We've got to bring this thing to how many? Think of a year ago, everything you was all worried about. You remember that? A year ago, you was all worried. And you're still here. But if you worried about all that, it's just brought misery to your life. And that's why the Bible says, pray about everything. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Pray about everything. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind at rest. How many is at rest? Well, look, it's simple. Just give it to God. Ain't no need to worry about your husband, the next door neighbor, the dog don't seem to be doing as good as he used to. Ain't no need to worry about it. If he dies, think of the money you'll save. Good side of life. Eh? Say, say, you know, I'm, I'm serious, but don't worry about anything. But you know what? I used to worry about everything. Anybody here ever worried about everything? Don't, I don't know. But I'm trying to help you. Don't worry about anything. Now, some of you, I, I can tell you got a few worries on you. So come on, let's come on to daddy now. Put it out, put it out there. Come on. Oh, put it right there. Come on. Everybody put your hand out there. Come on. Come on. Everybody. Everybody got it. Got it. Now you worried about this, you worried about that. Worried about this, worried about that. For what? Say, Lord, Lord, Lord I, cast I cast half of my cares, all my cares, on Pastor Bob, no. Miss Susan. No. Let's give Miss James a good taste no. of it. <laughs> Pour it on the deacons. No. All where? All on Jesus. Come on. Woo! Look at the mountain. The mountains absorb it all of that. Sucks it right in. You can't compare our little worry with the grace and the mercies of God. I'm painting a picture for you now. You ought to leave this place of jumping and a jumping and a jumping and a hallelujah. Sing and praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Now. Here we go. Therefore, since we are justified tomorrow, no, the minute you accept Christ, you repent of your sins and you receive him as your Lord and Savior, you believe that God raised him from the dead, you confess him as your Lord and Savior, right at that moment, you are fully justified in the eyes of God, and you can go right into the throne room of God and enjoy the Lord. Amen. All right, let's finish reading that. Acquitted, declared right. I, I, got, to, I got to get you to, uh, to see this. I got to milk this just a little bit. Y'all be patient with me now, because I want you to see this. See, I care for you. 
You're standing before the judge. All right, would you stand up here? Here's the judge. Willie, would you mind coming up? Stand right there. You've been found guilty, son. And you owe the state $100,000. But I want you to look at that mountain. Yes, sir. It's a hand is coming out of that mountain. Yes, sir. The hand of the Lord. I see it. Oh, look at it coming down. Yes, sir. I see it. One hundred thousand dollars, which you ain't got. Ain't got it. Which I ain't got either. But I play like I'm Jesus. Here's a one hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm going to pay the debt for you. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. Now, he's the judge. Tell him what. you free. How? Hey, he went jumping and leaping and praising God. That's yours. No. Say, I'm going to teach him a lesson. This is a giving man. This is yours. Thank you, Pastor Bob. You're welcome. <laughs> now, did you know you got to learn to receive? As, huh? You got, see, I'm trying to get you to receive. The mountain, the mountain, not the little thing. God took care of all this on this side of the cross. Christ gave his blood, died on that cross. And now he says, you're free. I've set you free. I've paid the fine. You are free to serve me, saith the Lord. Acquitted, declared righteous, holy, sanctified, born again, a new creation, and it was all paid for by what Christ did on the cross. Amen. The mountain, keep you out on the mountain. And the little sin over here, but transgression of one man, condemnation fell upon the whole earth. But because of the obedience of one man, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, we are free from what Adam has done. Very simple, and Paul says in Romans, yeah, but the other day that old man raised up. Well, no problem. The Bible told you what to do. Put him off and put on the new man, which is created after righteousness. That's in Romans. All right, now, here we go. Two more hours. <clears throat> Verse two. Verse two. Through him, now who is him? Jesus. Also we have our excess entrance, introduction by faith into this grace of mountain. State of God's favor. Say we're all, see I'm in God's favor. Yeah, but I threw a brook at the neighbor's, uh, a, a, a stone at the neighbor's dog the other day. You're still in the favor. When you see the dog, just tell him you're sorry. <laughs> Look, we've been, in, we, we have we, entrance, introduction by faith into this grace, state of God's favor in which we firmly and safely stand. Let us rejoice and exalt in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God now. All right, let's read it again. Through him also we have our excess, entrance, introduction, by faith, into this grace, state of God's favor, in which we firmly and safely stand. Let us be down and out. Why? Rejoice. Somebody show me what rejoicing is. Somebody come up here and give me a little demonstration. A little demonstration of him. Look at everybody, look at it. Come on up here right now. Somebody got some joy in your soul. Come up here right now. Mine, I don't want to do all the jumping and leaping and praying. Come on up, son. Let's see a little bit of it. He went jumping and hopping and heaping. And, oh, hallelujah. Woo! Now, look at that. Hey, hey, hey. 
Oh, woo! Hallelujah! Woo, 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 woo! Hallelujah! Oh, all right, boys, that's it. That's it, boys. Sit down. <laughs> That's the joy of the Lord is my strength. See, when you meditate on the mountain, when you meditate on what that mountain means to you, you're free. You're free. You're free from sin. You're free from the penalty of sin. You're free. God has declared you righteous. The highest court in heaven has says not guilty, paid in full by what Christ did on that cross. Susie, you want to give us a little demonstration of jumping and praising God? You want to come up and show us a little about jumping? Gee whiz. Dave, you want to do it? Not, not, you're not into it? Eh? Let's see if I can get, let's see if I can get some. I don't believe nobody's getting the message. All right, let me see if I can get somebody jumping and leaping and praising God. All right, all right. Look at that little girl back there. Look at her, look at her. A jumping and a praising and a leaping. Hallelujah. Come on up, honey. You earned it. Hallelujah. Come on, that $20 is yours. Hallelujah. Woo, 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 woo. Hallelujah. That's a little like Now that's the way you do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Folks, God has done such wonderful things. Keep your mind on the mountain of God's grace and mercy. You, it's no comparison to this little transgression over here. Adam, we love you, buddy, but pfft, I'm telling you, hallelujah for the last Adam from heaven has set us free. So rejoice in it. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. You have set us free. We're looking at the grace and the mercies of God. We cannot live without the grace of God. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people jumped up and went leaping and jumping and praising God. Jumping. There you go. Woo! Jumping and leaping and praising God. Woo, we are free by God's grace and mercy. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the food that we're about to eat and the fellowshipping. And we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. If you need prayer, come up and we'll be glad to pray for you. Just come on up and we'll pray for you.